Hi, I'm Andrew Wallace, and welcome to the We've Got a Problem podcast, where each week we explore inspiring stories of struggles, success, and solutions to prevalent problems and how our guests have turned a problem into an opportunity. This week, I'm joined by Joe Pickard, a voiceover artist, broadcaster, and live event presenter, including presenting and commentating at the London and Rio Olympic Games, who is now the face of Amaze UK's national campaign raising money for UK charities. Joe, welcome to the show. Oh, Andrew, thank you so much for having me. I'm really, really excited about this. How yeah, we're going did- to have such a great time. I'm really excited to talk. So, you, I mean, we've we've talked a little bit before we got into the interview, but how did you get your start? You're a voiceover artist, actor, presenter. What came first? I always wanted to be an actress from the minute that I could talk. My mum said that it was the most irritating thing. You know, I, they would own a pub and they owned a pub for like the whole time I grew up and I would sneak downstairs and go and do plays for the people downstairs. You know, I'd stand on tables and like be different characters and kind of like entertain them. And then my dad would come around the corner and he would find me and he'd be like, what the hell are you doing? What are <laughs> Get you back doing? Upstairs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I always wanted to be an actress. I think it was the one thing inside of me that um, was given to me. And and I think that it's a beautiful thing. It's just really interesting, you know, like I I trained to be an actress and, um, and I was... Um, a working professional actress for many, many years. And then presenting just kind of sidelined me. And uh, um, I put acting on hold for a really long time and the presenting side of things really kicked off. And now coming back to voice acting and again acting, it's like I've come home. It's right. so nice. Right. Well, that's I, so, I mean, some people don't really understand what it means to be a voice actor versus, uh, say, voiceover or, or narrator or, or whatever you want to call it, that, that there actually is so much acting involved in doing what people do uh, to, to read commercials, to read any of these things, to, to put the spirit of excitement and fun into ad copy takes a lot of acting <laughs> right <laughs> it takes a lot of acting yes and um just depending on who's written the script um yeah i mean it, it, it's a all storytelling as far as i'm concerned um yeah. i view every script that i get no matter how good or bad or what it's for it doesn't really matter because um it's all about telling a story and that's the way that we all live our lives and that's where happiness comes from and that's where creativity lies and you know inspiration and I think that um, if if a copy is read well, uh, you can potentially change somebody's life. You know, it's right. amazing. Right. But there's, I mean, again, it, you to have an acting background, you are light years ahead of somebody who's just trying to read copy, right? If I read your introduction of voiceover artist, broadcaster, and live event presenter, including presenting, that's, first of all, it's going to be boring to anybody who hears it. But secondly... The, the the fact is you 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 you're you've got one hand tied behind your back. People can't see your face when you're when you're when you're reading these things. So at least as a presenter, you're there. They can see the excitement. They can they they get all the the other information that that people get. But with with voiceover with voice acting, it really is uh, putting on a performance. It's yeah. it's 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 not. <laughs> not just not just reading no it's not and you know it's really interesting thinking about that you know i mentor some girls and the main thing that i say to them and not now because they're amazing but when they first started is about how you present yourself in the booth you know i'm in this booth by myself you know i look like i'm in a padded cell but and nobody can see me but they can hear my body language they can hear if i'm smiling they can hear if i'm you know having a bad day they can hear if i'm sat down if you're not careful you know you know, and it's really important when you read a copy and kind of go, okay, I need to put like this energy into that. And then it really does transfer into yes. the microphone. It's amazing. Yes. Well, and I, 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 I've become a little bit, because I now, you know, as a, as a podcaster, I've become quite critical of people that I can tell did some sort of voiceover with their headphones on. So I can't hear myself. That's the advantage, right? I don't have myself fed back into my headphones. But when you're doing, when you're recording in that booth, 
if you put your headphones on and you're hearing yourself as you you start to fall in love with the sound of your own voice. So you get these people, especially, and I think men are men are worse at this, and I'm just going to be critical, but that there there's certain people that I hear doing podcast intros and you can tell that they recorded with the with the headphones on because they fell in love with the sound of their own voice and they've got that like <laughs> you just tell they they you, that that you've got to be very careful about what you're what you're doing and and portraying because it comes it becomes unnatural and people can tell but that's that's only my own criticism of listening to, to certain people who are just starting and they just love it. Just, uh, just that. <laughs> and I'm, half so- on, I'm half on, half off. I feel like right. I'm revealing too much too soon, Andrew. You know, I'm <laughs> half on, half off. I feel like I need a little bit of well, my ego in there and then a little bit of reality. So I've got a bit of both. But that's, no, no, you have to. I mean, you have to have some, but, but half on, half off is is super uh that that's the, that's splitting the the best of both worlds because you you get it here but you're not you're you're not oblivious to the sound you're actually making in the room uh, exactly. i guess is the this is the thing but that's we're, we're getting a little bit too much inside baseball and i i can talk <laughs> about anything and everything a chap can unload uh so i mean it, so coming back to voiceover is something that you did a little more recently to, to, to doing voice acting. You built a studio during COVID. Is that correct? Well, actually, my husband, um, I, I worked away 90 percent of the time before I okay. met my husband. And um, when we got together, he lives. We now live together on a farm in the middle of nowhere in, in the ah. UK, in the north. Um, and it was one of those things where he was like, how do I? How do I allow you to be at home more, but keep your creativity? Got and it. he said, what What would make you be happy? And I was like, well, voiceover, because then it means that I can still act and I can still be creative and have my own space. And he said, right, okay, what do you need? And, the, and we were in Budapest. His dad had just died. Um, we were having like one of those, you know, small breaks where we just kind of paused, um, reflected on life, kind of figured out where we were, you know, because it Death does that to, to, yes, to you yes. in, a, in, a, in a family, right? And I just remember being uh, in this bar and him saying, okay, what do you need? I don't understand what this is. And me kind of, you know, with a glass, a large glass of wine in my hand, kind of telling him what I wanted. And um, I went away with work again. And three weeks later, I came back from, uh, I think it was South Africa or America or somewhere. Um, and I had this like shell <laughs> of this voiceover studio. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wow well, that's amazing but you know between us it, it's quite interesting isn't it when somebody gives you the thing that you want there is a transitional period where you kind of fight against that because it's not in your own time you know right and yeah. he's like it's okay it's there when you need it it's just there and then yeah covid hit right okay so perfect that's it's it, quite fortuitous i suppose mm-hmm. to to have it there so you could keep keep doing what you were doing well that's fantastic because i think one of the one of the big issues for for people and i talked with a guest very early on on this show about is is the fact that people get laser focused on what they think their path is going to be so i talked to a woman who who started as a dancer and she became an actress and then she became a director and then she she did some choreography and she just kind of kept pivoting as the jobs that she found weren't available to her or that that things were shifting in the marketplace she just kept going well what else can i do and in a sense being open to and having the having the ability and and i i get that a lot of people are not in this in this kind of frame of mind most of the time but having the the willingness to just pivot slightly right from from acting to presenting well that's a logical that's kind of a logical transition to to voice acting to doing a little more of this a little less of that as as the as the marketplace is is welcoming and opening to to those kinds of things i think that's just fantastic and now it's there and now you have it and now you can do wonderful podcast interviews with with fascinating people like myself exactly but you know it's in and that's really interesting what you talked about is and i think that's quite an important um point about being open um and about being having that ability to be able to change and i think that anybody no matter what industry they're in 
if they were if they became more open to opportunity and actually listened you know because i think that a lot of life people don't listen yeah they get these amazing opportunities handed to them but because it's not within their remit those opportunities go go you know and i've always prided myself um taken pride in um being fluid and um listening you know what direction do i want to go in well that doesn't actually matter because life's got its life's life i believe that life has got its way for me and 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 i will follow that road you know i will listen and i will follow that road wherever it takes me and that's my journey and i i think that's really important well what's this what's the the saying life is what happens while you're busy making other plans the 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 following being open i suppose like like you say listening being open to 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 gifts that are given is huge just absolutely huge for for leading a more fulfilling life certainly something i need to do more of and probably you do too mr listener out there the 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 fact is we're we build these walls around us that that to, to tell ourselves what we are and what we aren't and what we can and can't do. And who's to say that those beliefs are all true? We could be out there presenting at the Olympics in Rio if, if we set our mind to it. Perhaps. You never know. Talk to me but a little bit. you know bit. I never set my mind to that. No, no, I know. <laughs> that well, that's just not something that I set my mind to. No. I was like, oh, um, yeah, sure. <laughs> well, I can do that. That's that's actually my next question is I think presenting might be on the on the list of worst nightmares for a lot of people because it's not just public speaking which is a common fear but it's public speaking basically live on television with people you generally haven't met and have no idea what's going to come down the pike you're it's it's improv combined with public speaking combined uh, just how how do you do that how does that work what is that like for you did I think, you- I think I love people I think I love people and I love communicating and I really enjoy human nature and I I I like I said before I'm a storyteller so I love finding out people's stories you know, predominantly in the presenting world, I worked either in food or in sport. And I think that those two things, there's so many big personalities, especially in sport. <laughs> well, I mean, both, both huge personalities. Um, but they don't necessarily understand how to tell their story. Right, and they right. need a guide. They need a facilitator. And I never, ever looked at being a presenter that was about me. I didn't stand there to tell my story. Yeah, right. I had fun. I entertained. I talked to people as though they were my friends. And, and you know, and no matter where I was in the world, who, wh- whoever I was talking to, they were my best friends. You know, I was telling them about this amazing thing. And the communication it, for me is what, what drives me. I really enjoy that ign- ignition of people's um, uh, uh, inspiration and, and laughter and uh, uh, and interest in learning as well you know people that come and watch anything come because they want to learn something right yes, and yeah. and that's kind of a cool thing to be part of so i never tried to never let my ego take over and tried to make it about everybody else having a great time well yeah I, so i would mean, suppose that the, the next question becomes how do we all benefit from that experience? What 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 can you t- what lessons can you teach us? Can you tell us about interacting with with folks uh, out there and bringing? I think, like you said, and 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 maybe you've already answered the question. Bringing the spirit of curiosity to everything that 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 you do, like you're talking to some and sharing this experience with 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 a good friend, is is probably most important in all the interactions we have with new people, with in job interviews and all these kinds of things that we go through. But- You know what, what I, think, I think people can take away some really massive things that are actually quite simple, um, but really life-changing, especially in, you know, job interviews or maybe situations where 
you feel a little bit insecure, you know, you're talking to people that um, maybe you feel um, are more intelligent than you or maybe more experienced than you or you're uncomfortable in a situation. And I think the one thing that I would, two things actually that I would say is try really hard to allow flow to happen. And what I mean by that is don't overthink it. Just be. <laughs> Because people, people try and think about what they're saying. Yes. And I know that sounds like a ridiculous thing to say, but they, people overthink. They allow that part of their brain where their internal thoughts take over what is actually happening in reality. So me and you are talking here. I've got no script in front of me. I've got no idea what you're going to ask me. And I'm really enjoying the fact that it's free. You know, I'm right. not right. letting anything in my head come through. I'm just talking because we have all got interesting things to say, no matter who we are. And, you know, you are a human being, I'm a human being, we're all on level playing field, realistically. And it's only what's inside your head that tells you. Yes. Tell, that tells you anything different. And it's yes. about yeah. quietening that monkey, telling it to shut up, pack its <laughs> bags, get out, because you want to be in flow, you want to let it, you know. Well, I think that's, that's also the mistake that a lot of interviewers make. I mean, being the interviewee, job interviewer or, or anything of that nature, you, you, you tend to overthink it. Are, are, are the answers that I'm giving the ones that they want to hear? Or is, is this what I should be saying? Am I, am I sounding intelligent enough? All those kind of questions that are flying through your head. But also interviewers having an idea of what they want to ask, right? They're not listening to the response that's being given. They're just focusing on the next question. They're just they're just worried about what 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 else do I have to get out there and and all these things again still in their head, and that's what I what sadly and and perhaps as a as a good thing, what I end up doing on the show as an interviewer is I have the question, and I'm only thinking about when when you're talking or or any interviewer uh, inter, interviewee is talking, I'm thinking about ooh. Ooh, ooh, what else can we talk about? Oh, I wanted to talk about that. Forget that. This is much more interesting. And just being present in the in the flow of the moment. Because we might discover something that I hadn't even thought about asking. And so occasionally I may refer back to my notes to go, oh, I've got a follow-up question on that 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 would be great. Skip that, forget that. And also trying to make sure that I'm I'm staying on time. But other than than a few quick glances to to the clock and, and and all those things to make sure that we're we're keeping on target and that I am not accidentally getting beyond what my audience might like to hear about. It's about having a conversation, and you can't have a conversation that's one sided where you're where you're just just listening or or just uh, talking all the time. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, and be open to the flow. I well, think as well, you know, what's really interesting when I've, I don't do an interviews, I do auditions and they're really different. Um, but I think you know, a lot of my friends uh, and family have different jobs to me and they go, I've been through many, many interview processes. And I, the thing that I find really funny and have interviewed a lot of people. And the thing that I find so interesting is that, yes, you need to prepare. Yes, you need to, you know, g give the answers in in a way that is expected within the environment that you're um, that you're in. But actually, what always nails that job is your personality and allowing your personality to come through. Um, because if you get on and you are you you are entirely you, and you get on with that person in front of you, they will turn a blind eye to something that potentially isn't. 100% ideal if right. you got on better with you than the next person. And I yes. think that that's something that people need to, you know, take into their into their uh, futures because it's really important to be personable. Well, I think the, 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 yes, absolutely. First of all, yes, yes, yes. The personality aspect is tremendously overlooked and job recruiters and whatever the the people are who are trying to tell you what you should be doing or shouldn't be doing in an interview focus all on the how you present yourself and all these things in the in the technical aspect of it forgetting of course that ultimately so much of an interview is do i want to be around this person on a day-to-day -day basis 
and work with this person because beyond the as I, as I had a, a, a guest recently say to me, look, I, I'm hiring for fit, not for for skill. I'm 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 I want somebody who who's a good fit for the for the position, and I can teach him everything else. The mm. the all those other things. Okay, you don't have the experience we wanted. You don't have the 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 this or that or the particular degree, but you're a great fit for this position because of your personality and personality matters in first of all that I'm going to have to work with you and I just don't want to work with bad people <laughs> who, who wants to you know you might be technically excellent but man just no the jokes suck. <laughs> yeah, well, I I mean, I did have a, I had a, a, a boss t- talk to me about the, whatever it is, the 3 a.m. in Japan test, right? That that's one of the big things you're trying to pass is if we got stuck at, uh, and it's 3 a.m. in Japan and we missed our flight and it's just the two of us in the airport, what are we going to have to talk about? Are, are we going to enjoy just actually being together as people? You know, we're not going to talk about work at 3 a.m. in Japan. I'm going to take my boss to the bar. <laughs> Let's. <laughs> Yeah, start make there. Make the cocktail list. Yeah. <laughs> there's a, I think I, I might get a job. Just putting yeah, it out there. There's a, a whole thing about tiki bars, the, the which which is cultural appropriation and all these horrible things. But at a lot of tiki bars in, in the United States, they have like the grog log where you have to work your way through all the different very fruity, very sugary drinks. And if you made your way through, I can guarantee you'll have a hangover. I mean, I just... 100% guarantee that you will regret it for the rest of your life. Uh, so before we get too too far off topic, you the job that you do requires a high degree of, of I suppose, confidence in a sense. Have you always, I mean, you, you have to go in, you have to nail the audition, nail the, the, the presenting, whatever it is. Have you always been super confident or do you do you kind of struggle with that? And how has that been? It depends on which day you ask me that question. <laughs> you know, I think uh, I'm, I'm human uh, and every day is different. I, I, you know, I, when I was younger, I, I think for my, my twenties, I was in like a different headspace. I think that I hadn't kind of reached adulthood in all honesty. And I think that I was still quite childlike and the acting side of things for me in the twenties was really difficult. And I struggled so much with my confidence. Mm-hmm. Um, and I struggled with, um, um, audition anxiety and, um, and physical shaking. And I, it wasn't, ideal i managed to get through it and i and i was pretty successful in my 20s as an actress but it was very difficult for me inside my head um to be there um Mm -hmm. and i started working about 28 um on myself and on my ability to be able to give myself the confidence that i needed to be able to do the job that i loved and i wanted to do um, because I could just have given up, you know, because it, it was debilitating at times. And and it really did. It was something that massively, massively affected me. But I'm quite stubborn and <laughs> I know what I want and I won't allow something to stop me. So right. I have done a lot of work on myself. Um, I am a massive advocate of journaling. I'm a huge, huge believer in affirmations. They've completely and utterly changed my confidence without a shadow of a doubt. I think that I didn't love myself. I didn't respect myself and I didn't believe in myself. And Mm -hmm. I think now after every single day of my entire life, the age of 28, and I will do until I die, saying positive, happy, wonderful things to myself in my head constantly. I am my biggest cheerleader now, my biggest fan. And that's what gives me the confidence now to do anything that I want. Because huge lessons there. Huge yeah. lessons there because that we've, well, I think we've all got a, 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 a doubting voice in our head, imposter syndrome at times, not always, but there are those moments when we, when, when all of us walk into a situation and especially when you're an actor and you just are faced with constant rejection because you're not right for the, you're not right for the role. You're not right for this. You're not right for that. So you have a lot of doors shut in your face as you're trying to make your way. And it's hard to avoid going, well, maybe it's something about me. No, no, no. I mean, just, to, just to go, no, I am I am right. I'm just not right for that role. Be very specific. You know, this they, they didn't see it. I can show them next time, all those kinds of things. 
huge. Absolutely huge. I allow myself 10 seconds <laughs> now. 10 seconds. It's true. So I get an audition. I do the audition. I don't beat myself up about it. I be as creative as I can. And I tell the story the best I can. And I send it. And then I forget about it. And then when I hear, either way, and I genuinely forget about it. And when I hear, either way, whether it's a yes or a no, I give myself 10 seconds. And I can either celebrate in that 10 seconds or I can ask any of those horrible questions that you ask yourself. Is it me? What's wrong? Oh my God, this is awful. Bah, poor me. And then the timer goes and then it stops because you cannot do anything. You've done everything that you can and it wasn't for you. So move on. Next. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Literally. Perfect. Well, but but really that that that's huge. That's absolutely huge. And a great way to allow yourself to enjoy or not what's what's happened without letting it overwhelm and and dominate i suppose because you don't you you want neither neither emotion to dominate you don't want to be just going wow this is so great i'm so glad i got this this is wonderful and then the whole day is about that instead of actually okay getting on to the next thing because that's we we have a problem in the in the entertainment business where I work that that somebody will sell a script a writer will sell a script and the next question then they they they're they're euphoric they're 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 absolutely on cloud nine but the next question the entire industry is asking is what else do you have yeah what's next S what's next so you've got to be you capitalize on that on that moment you've got to you've got to go you got to get enjoy celebrate great. And I'm not saying just celebrate for 10 seconds. If you sell a script and you, you know, it's the first script you've ever done, you might need to celebrate a little bit more than that. <laughs> Have an adult beverage or something, whatever floats your boat. But you you still do need to get back to work and mm -hmm. and continue on and, and, and move forward and enjoy it. I mean, again, <laughs> please do enjoy your successes. But conversely, those those failures, it's like, all right, that sucked. That was that was bad. That was not a pleasurable experience. All right, let's get on with it. Let's move. Let's move forward and uh, onward and upward. So you know what's interesting about about celebrating success? I find it really interesting. So I do genuinely believe in celebrating success. I honestly do, um, and I think that if you if you don't, you're completely right. You know, you, you, what's the point? <laughs> like, right. Yeah. You need to have that moment, but also. It, it's back to this um, flow again, you know, your, your, it's energy, right? So kinetic energy, you've created a positive moving energy by achieving something. And if you carry on off the back of that achievement without giving yourself too much celebration time, then you're actually riding a wave, which will only ever help you um, to be able to get to your next Yes. Oh, whatever that is. And it, they don't have to be huge. Like, I don't mean, you know, you're talking about selling scripts. I'm talking about additions. You know, they can sure. just be small wins, right? But I think that, that that's a really nice way of looking at it is the wave, you know, just keep on, keep on catching that wave, you know, keep on going because the energy that it creates could take you in an amazing direction. Yes. And that's that that can apply even to going through every single day of our lives. Right, building in little successes and and riding that wave of of positivity. I there's there's a book about if you want to change the world, start by making your bed or or, or one of those titles. But it's true because if you build in these these little things in the morning, the first thing you do is okay. I've my my bed is made. I've had my 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 bre I had a good breakfast. I started this way. It's like okay, we're just building, we're building up these little mini successes. And really, the, the world becomes your, your oyster if you get into, into those kinds of things. And, and yes, the momentum is crucial for, for writing those kinds of things and celebrating. We're going full nautical theme, Andrew. Full, full nautical. nautical. Full yeah. nautical. <laughs> Why not? <Yeah. laughs> love, to, love to mix metaphors, though, so we may get into some, <laughs> into some other things. So I, a couple of questions before we, before we end here, because we're getting kind of near the, the end. What do you feel like is the biggest fallacy that everybody buys into that's just, as you would say, rubbish? What 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 do you think 
people are just so wrong about that they think or they're, they're right about. You can find happiness outside your body. That's the biggest one for me. And, and I think that love and happiness, I think that people search for love and happiness and they think to themselves, if I just get that, then I'll be happy. If I meet that person, then I will find love. If I achieve that goal, then I will be happy. If I earn this much money, I will be happy. Um, you know, and, and, and the same with love. Like if I meet the right person, then I will feel love. I will feel, I will feel these things. Whereas actually I believe that <laughs> everything that people believe and are taught and are shown constantly you know it's just wrong it's just all wrong happiness and love is a decision yes, i wake up yes. every single morning and i look at my husband and i make an active decision i roll over and i go i love you i choose to love you i choose to be happy i say my affirmations and i wake up on a really great foot because i've chosen that don't get me wrong look i've had hard things in my life really hard things in my life um that um i've had to battle with uh and uh, and i'm not saying that that ha choosing happiness is easy um and especially when you know you have grief or um maybe you're going through a hard time with whatever you have going on in your life but you still have a choice and that choice is entirely yours right and right. You know, it, 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 making the choice is the hardest thing. And you don't have to be happy 24 hours a day, seven days a week, but you have a choice to be able to make. I'm not I'm not talking about depression, things that people have that that need proper help. That is a very different subject. I'm talking about day to day happiness. Um, it, it, you know, if you if you have a, pro a real problem, then right, that right. needs external help. Um, but there is a choice that you can that you can make. That's that is honestly how I look at life. Yes, and like like you say, l our, the biggest fallacy is that you're going to find it outside of yourself. Yes. That, that it's going to be out there somewhere else, and it's just like you say. Some if I can just get that one. Some guy in the marketing one... department, Andrew. Some guy in the marketing <laughs> department came up with that, right? Well, of He's course. Like, Oh of guys, this is how we're going to sell so much stuff. Like, let's right. If you just buy this car, people will 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 like you. You'll be yeah. this. This is if you buy this, you'll be happy. If you do this, you'll be happy. And I, it, hey, that's what we're being sold all all over. If you it, it, you'll be you'll be happy. You'll be thin. You'll be you'll be you'll 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 look like a supermodel. It'll be great if you just buy our toothpaste. You know, that's the that's the right. That's what every commercial is selling you. I Look mean, at how happy those people are who 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 use that toothpaste. They just, I mean, they they they. It's somehow it's made them lose weight, and it's done all these things. You know, uh, so read the link to that toothpaste, yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll send it to you. So the, the the other side of that is, what do you think the most? And you you may have answered it already. So if you have, don't worry about it. But. What do you think the most underrated concept is that, that people overlook? What are we missing? Mm, that's a really interesting question. I think that the, we're overlooking our intuition. I think I think that we are all superhumans. Like we've all got this superpower and it's inside all of us and it's free and it's a muscle. And if you work on it, you can really, really, really make it work in your favor because it is so powerful and it's something that is your gift in life you know it, it's the thing that tells you whether something is right for you a situation is dangerous or a situation is like amazing you know but also like day-to-day -day things like your intuition can be super helpful and I think that's the one thing that people overlook because they can't see it feel it mm -hmm. or understand it absolutely absolutely so we're we're kind of coming to the end, but I don't want to to close before we talk a little bit about Omaze and how much money you folks have raised for charity. Talk to me a little bit about your your current. Excitement. Yes. So Tuesday we gave away our tenth 
check in two years. Um, it launched in the UK in 2020. Yay. Great timing. Um, <laughs> it's perfect. I mean, it actually was great timing. Um, but, uh, it, you know, we give, we are a business, um, but we give 80% of the net profits of each campaign to our designated charity. Um, we've had 10 amazing, amazing charities. And we gave the check to our 10th charity on Tuesday and we have raised a whopping um, seven and a half million pounds for 10 different charities in two years. That's Absolutely amazing. Absolutely it, amazing. It's oh, amazing. Oh, amazing. Thank you. I'm sorry. <laughs> Got to get the branding in there. So <laughs> if you want to know more about Joe, follow her on Instagram at Joe Pickard voiceover. Check out her website, joannepickard.co.uk. All links are in the show notes as always. Until next time, I'm Andrew Wallace, and we don't have a problem. We've got an opportunity. <laughs>